Hello, and welcome to Module 3 Case Study with Katie Began, Shakisha Herring, and LaCheryl Smith. We're at Southern Wesleyan University with Dr. Paul Schatzberger. Today, we're going to be talking about our case study, which focuses on Miss Sims, who is a veteran teacher, but at a new school. She has previous experience working with GATE students, but now has a classroom with um, several IEPs students in the classroom. She is feeling overwhelmed and underprepared, or she has three separate preps that she is trying to work with, and she does not have experience working with scholars with unfinished learning or students with IEPs. She is brought to the attention to her principal, Ms. Rose, that she doesn't feel confident in her ability to help the students Miss Rose, who has a background in SPED, is going to set up a plan for her and her, her co-teacher, which is Mrs. Wright, who is a SPED teacher in the room. Mr. Hips, who is in charge of scheduling, is the assistant principal and also the mentor to Miss Sims. First, we're going to look at the multiple ethical paradigms. We're going to look at justice, care, critique, and profession. First up is ethic of justice. So the questionable responses from the teachers and administrators regulated the turbulence within the school. Ms. Sims often referred to her students as IEP students instead of scholars with unfinished learning. In addition, Ms. Sims withheld lesson plans and important details from her co-teacher, Mrs. Wright. This delayed the learning in the classroom as well as underserving those IEP students and really exacerbating the situation. The interpretation of the case dilemma is the rights against the individuals in the classroom versus the good of the English teachers. So the students with the IEPs need to be given the skills in order to be successful. So for the good of the majority, Principal Rose enforced that the school's policy of equality within the school by addressing that Ms. Sims referred to her students as scholars with unfinished learning instead of students with IEPs. Now we're going to look at ethic of care. We have four different perspectives and they all have a, a certain level of care, but what we're missing in some situation is the level of connection or concern. So Miss Sims is not really showing that she is connected to the students who have unfinished learning or that have IEPs because she's not really working with um, Mrs. Wright, who is her co-teacher. Mr. Hips has limited evidence of a personal relationship with Miss Sims. Um, and is he's trying to schedule her classes to have all the students with IEPs in the same room to best benefit the students because that's when they can have their co-teacher. Miss Rose, evidence of care through using a standard procedure for obtaining information in order to make an ethical decision to help everybody. And Mrs. Wright has limited evidence of care she did not reach out to administration with the lesson plans and they were or they were not shared with her to help out with the students with IEPs. When we look at ethic of critique, Principal Rose investigated the dilemma and identified that Mrs. Wright, who is the SPED teacher, did not discuss options with Ms. Sims. She just sat by and let Ms. Sims get to a level of frustration. The discourse between Principal Rose and Miss Wright was at the beginning of empowerment and transformation when all that information was brought to the table. Ethic of profession. Miss Sims previously had taught gifted and talented students and was now moving into students with IEPs or unfinished learning. Mr. Hips did not express concern with Ms. Sims referring to scholars as an IEP student. Instead, Principal Rose, who has the background in special education, viewed it differently. So the behavior in one community may be seen differently. And then 
Ms. Sims felt that her class was a dumping ground for IEPs. Professionally, the students were scheduled by Mr. Hips to be better served, but with the co-teaching strategies that were supposed to be employed with Mrs. Wright. Now, when we look at the turbulence theory, this is somewhere between a light and a moderate. It's a light because it doesn't affect this school as a whole, but it can quickly go to a moderate because if it were not addressed efficiently, it could affect the school culture and how the teachers felt supported. When we look at turbulence theory, we have to look at how individuals can propel turbulence to higher levels. Creating that rift in school culture can really have a ripple effect. Now the choice of actions, we chose that Principal Rose needs to provide Ms. Sims with some extra time away from the classroom to get ahead on lesson planning. A lot of Ms. Sims' frustration was coming from feeling overwhelmed. She had three preps and she didn't know how to teach with a co-teacher and teach students with IEPs or scholars with unfinished learning. Principal Rose needs to clarify the role of Mrs. Wright as a co-teacher because Mrs. Wright wasn't helping out Ms. Sims, even though she's in the room every day. Mr. Hips needs to have a meeting with Ms. Sims to discuss the schedule and reassure her that she isn't being dumped on. Having the students with IEPs in one group is great for the co-teaching model, but if the co-teaching model wasn't employed, then that's probably why Ms. Sims felt like it was a dumping ground. Principal Rose needs to provide coaching and support to Ms. Sims to help her serve scholars with unfinished learning. The supports put in place will help Ms. Sims serve all 27 of her scholars. And here are our references. Thank you.